Welcome to another installment of On My Arty Bookshelf. So nice to have you here today. Each week, more or less this year, I am pulling out some of the many books that I have and creating a piece of mixed media art inspired by them. Brave Intuitive Painting. This is just a wonderful book. I just love the bold, juicy paintings that Flora Boli does. But I love the way that she entwines mindfulness and movement and painting and mark making and joy and play and being bold and working with wild abandon and just being alive into her paintings and into the classes that she offers. I know a few people who've been to her classes and they've loved them. And imagine a book on painting that shows somebody, the author swinging on a swing. And I feel like she really gets what intuition is all about as it relates to art. And I think that she really encourages people to identify what their marks and their symbols and the things that have meaning to them are. And when she teaches her classes, I don't think that she's teaching people to use her marks. I think she's trying to get them to figure out what makes them alive, what colors and marks and shapes and patterns have meaning to them. And then we have this book, Zen Doodling, which on the surface may seem like it shares a lot of those values with Flora Bully's art. And you know, when you look inside, it's certainly got some gorgeous, beautiful drawings that are just so rich and sumptuous and quite wonderful. And it talks about learning and exploring and experimenting. But then when you dig into it, it's got these very precise instructions for recreating somebody else's patterns exactly. And then I think, hmm, and this line from the movie, The Princess Bride, comes to me. You keep using that word, but I don't think it means what you think it means. And, you know, Zen doodling and its cousin Zen tangling and even Zen stitching. I, I sometimes struggle to understand why they use the word Zen. And certainly this book has some really beautiful patterns and I think they're really gorgeous. But to me, Zen is about finding meaning and essence at your true core. And as long as you're using somebody else's instructions and creating the designs that they've laid out for you, are you really finding your core beliefs, your core values, and your core sense of self? I don't know. So let's see what I can do with these two books and come up with my own doodling piece that's not huge and bold like Flora's, but it's small. I'm gonna work on the small little piece of watercolor paper that I have that's going to fit into my book that I'm making this year. And I'm working with gouache, which is like a thick, bold watercolor paint. And I know that there's an acrylic gouache. This is not that. This is a water-based gouache that you can use just like you would use watercolor paint. But the colors are really intense and bold. And I'm just splashing down splodges of colors and seeing what kind of marks my brush makes and if I like a mark I'm repeating it I'm changing colors on a whim and you know it's not completely without rules because I'm containing my marks to this one piece of paper I'm mainly making my marks on the white parts of the paper I'm not layering on the colors on top of each other but now I'm going to do something a little bit nuts I'm sprinkling on this stuff. It's called Watercolor Magic, and it's a kid's art supply, and we'll see what happens. And then for my second layer, I let the paint dry in between, and it, look, it looks like my paper, papers have multiplied. Well, that Watercolor Magic was really really strong and it was pooling on my paper and I decided that I had to mop some of it up so I used some more pieces of watercolor paper and this is the result. So now that the the first layer is dry I'm going on top of it with another layer and again I guess I'm not really thinking a lot about what kind of marks I'm making. I don't know why and it doesn't really matter but I'm creating a lot of these narrow 
parallel lines and then the little dotty very organized regular kind of patterns but then interspersed with kind of bold splooshes of color my little rule for myself when i doodle is i make one mark and then if i like it i make more of them so they look like a little cluster and then when I don't feel like doing that anymore, I do something else. And at this point, I decided that I wanted to fill in some areas with more color, leave less white space. And then I went back to doing little parallel dashes and lines and back and forth. And the nice thing about having now having more pieces of paper, I have more real estate to play with. And I can let the paint dry a little bit on one piece while I work on another piece. Or if I like the lines that I did on one piece, then I can do them again in another place on another piece and just keep going. But it's not like I've thrown out all the rules. I'm not putting paint on top, layering on top and top and top. I'm creating one layer of paint and letting it dry and then another layer of paint. And now at this point, I'm starting to see some imagery. At first I was just doing what I felt like, but now in, in some of these, I'm starting to respond to what I see there. So I decided to lean into that. And I, at that first piece, I saw some plants. So I created some leaves and some more branches. And then this piece, I felt like, there was not enough darkness in it, so I decided that I wanted to put in some darker colors and I'm using the the lines and the edges of the paint that's already there to guide where I'm putting putting the new colors in. So and I thought that looked like a flower, so it needed some leaves. But on this piece, I'm not really seeing anything, so I'm doing what I did on the first layer. I'm just adding more marks, lots more of those parallel lines and these little dashy little dots there and going back and forth, jumping around. I don't know what's in this piece yet, but there'll be something. And now this piece, somewhere along the way, I saw a face. So now I've decided that I want to emphasize the facial features and de-emphasize some of the other lines. So I'm using this really solid Naples yellow, I think is that color. In gouache, it's a really dense, chalky looking color. And then I thought I'd use it on this other piece too. So now I'm going to set the paints aside and get out my drawing tools. Now this one's already had some drawing added to it. I use these gel pens on it. And so I think I'm going to do those gel pens on the other pieces as well. I'm just doing doodling here. One of the things that I've been doing when I doodle since I was a kid. I create these lines that just follow whatever is already there. And then when one, one line gets to the end of the page, then I go around the outside edge of that line. They're almost like contour lines, but not exactly. And then when I decided I didn't want to do any more of those contour lines, I did some straight lines coming out from the edge. Now I've switched to another tool. This is a water soluble pastel it's kind of like a wax pastel but if you hit it with water it'll start to move and blend like watercolor or gouache so i'm just rubbing on some different colors there on top of my watercolor that's already be behind it and then i'm hitting it with some water on my brush there and it's blending in with the watercolor paint that was underneath so didn't get quite as light as I expected but that's all good it's all good now I'm making the outside edge darker after I spent all that time with the gel pens now I'm covering it up which is good too right because that's part of this whole journey is sometimes things get covered up and they're still there it's you can still see them they're adding to the complexity of the piece and now I got out my sharpies I felt like the facial features on this piece needed to be punched up a little bit now I'm doing lots of little dots there that's creating a hairline maybe hockey hair or a mullet is that what they're called different hair on the top and on the back and here's how the pieces look right now that first one i think is done but the others i think still need more work blobs have appeared on that one that are reminding me of birds so back to my sharpies and now this this one with the with the flower on it, I started to think it was it rem was reminding me of something called a Macintosh rose, which is a design that you often see in stained glass. So I decided to go with that and create a stained glass like effect on that piece. And here I'm still just making marks with those gel pens and enjoying it. 
and I saw some buildings in that piece so I decided to turn those lines into buildings there and they've all turned out very differently there's the one rose the Macintosh rose what comes next here oh there's that piece with the birds flying towards the city there the city skyscrapers there and then this one also got the stained glass treatment and the last one my face there is the finished face and I made I made that first piece my favorite piece into a little pouch to hold the others in my booklet here anyway thanks again for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and that I will see you again soon bye for now